All right, what's up, Head? How's everybody doing today? We are going to talk about the amazing accomplishments that Pigpen had in his short life. Tomorrow, the 8th of March, will be 50 years since Pigpen passed away, sadly. So, what I'd like to do today is play some of his songs and highlight just how incredible he was way back in the beginning of the band. So, this show is from 66 at this Avalon Ballroom show. Uh, this is not the show, there was an Avalon Ballroom show. I couldn't find this one, I looked around. So this is one that was about four weeks prior to this, but this was June 10th, 66. So this was uh, May of 66 at the Avalon. I'll turn it up a little bit because it needs to go a little louder. I picked four songs off of here to listen to so we could kind of delve into like Pigpen's skills even as a young man. Now he was 21 years old when he was singing this stuff and his voice is so far ahead of the other guys in the band because of number one his interest in the blues number two his ability to get into the clubs as a teenager in East Palo Alto and study the music with people who were playing it every night um, his history is incredible and to think that literally he only lived 27 years is truly truly sad but we're not here to be sad today. We're here to talk about Pigpen and commemorate him uh, because he was incredible. We're also going to talk in a little while because we're going to listen to four different songs today. They're not that long, but they're all just amazing. Amazing. Now, Bobby and Jerry's voice voices came into play as the band developed over a bunch of years. Pigpen's voice was already on point. And those guys consequently learned to sing from Pig and of other, other sources too, but mainly from listening to him and understanding how your vocals worked along with the music. Pigpen had it naturally, obviously, so. And he loved Rainier Beer. He loved Dickel Whiskey. I don't have any Dickel Whiskey because I don't drink whiskey, but I'll salute him with a Rainier Beer because I certainly fucking love Rainiers. Ah. Yes. So, um, the four songs we listen to on here, like I said, highlight his vocals, but they also just highlight the ability that he had to, or the, the natural stage presence he had. I mean, you can just tell that he's standing up there in front of everybody, leading the band through these songs, and his vocals are carrying everything to this heightened point, which I always thought was just fucking amazing, so, um, I always wonder, and it's a debatable question, what would have happened if Pigpen hadn't passed away, so we're gonna pop into another song real quick, I'm just gonna reach over and click it on, and, uh, we'll start talking about that in one sec, so hang on, let me get this going here. We're gonna move right into the, it's a, oh wait, Sick and Tired. Sick and Tired is the second song we're listening to on here today. So we got, let's see, I got some notes here, so if I'm looking down here, that's what I'm doing. It hurts me too, Sick and Tired, uh, Come Back Baby, and then, way at the end, this crazy, poppy, Fast, good love. Listen to the the depth of his voice at 21 years old. It's amazing. <clears throat> this is gonna be a long one, but oh, also, um, someone who lived on Pigpen's block, who was friends with Pigpen's younger brother Kevin sent me an email or responded to one of my videos about Pigpen and said that he knew his little brother Kevin and they were pals when you were growing up. So after we listen to a couple of these songs, I'll read you what this guy 
His name is Francisco Joaquina, and apparently lived on Pigpen's block, and McKernan's block, so um, I'll read this to you in a little bit, but we're going to jam on these songs for a minute. Most of them are pretty short. I think the only one, longest one, they're like three or four minutes. But it really highlights how accomplished he was, you know? I mean, with all those shows they have on now, like, whatever, fucking American Idol or whatever, like, Pigpen could have fucking killed at one of those shows when he was, like, 17, 16. Listen to that heart. That's fucking amazing. So, where do you think Pigpen would have went if he hadn't passed away? There's all these options and different things that he could have done had he decided to branch out and do solo stuff uh, like, you know, Bobby and Jerry did. Um, they started doing that in the early 70s. Also, one of the questions, I mean, the music changed so much after 1973. I mean, Naturally, after Pig passed away, the majority of his songs were dropped out of the repertoire. But when those songs came back years later as breakouts, if you will, they were hugely, hugely received. Like the the, the Love Light um, in at Milkwag, people couldn't fucking believe it, and they loved it. Would there have been a Ron McKernan band? You know, like like. Would Pig have toured with Jerry sometimes, or Bobby even, for their, you know, with, on their projects? You know, uh, it's it's really hard to say, you know, and it's 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 sad that he was so short-lived. Um, but he also lived the life of a hard rock and roller, so you know, um, uh, you can't really, you know, say much when you know. You know, he's just running it the way he wants to run it. You know, he lived his life the way he wanted to. So, um, let's go down here to, uh, I think it's Come Back Baby. Is that right? Let me check my notes. Yep, Come Back Baby. These are killer. I got a little Jerry Weed. Take a nice hit. Even though Pigpen wasn't a weed smoker, really. He'd probably still like Jerry's weed. <laughs> so yeah, this is 5-19-66 at the Avalon. Let me see what else did I write down on here. You know, do you think Pigpen would have just kept playing with the dead off and on and just sat in? Because, I mean, you know, 70, 71, 72, even earlier, there would be big sections, even in this show, where, you know, he was just playing organ and in the background singing, which is killer because he ripped, you know? Hard to say, but, you know, like... Do you think the dead would have asked him to leave the band because their music was changing so much? That's a hard call, you know, because being an original member wasn't like the... He's the only keyboard player who was not in the revolving keyboard seat. He just passed away. So that's, you know, one of those questions that clearly will never be answered. But, you know... You just wonder, you know, how, how would he have continued along with the dead? Would he went on? Would he have went off on his own? And when you think about it too, like, you know, who would he have played with? Like, 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 I mean, you know, one of the one of the 
I could see him playing with all kinds of different musicians and fitting in really well, like on the blues set, but also, you know, with other rock and roll bands just sitting in and having a good time with them. You know, there's that story about Bob Weir and Joe Strummer drinking a whole bottle of tequila when they were playing at the same venue. I think it was in Jamaica, maybe, and fucking all Joe Strummer wanted to talk about apparently was what Pigpen was like and the whole blues thing and all the Grateful Dead's early blues um, origins and and all of their influences. So, you know, uh, I you know I mean would fuck would would uh, would he have joined up with Lemmy and sang in Motorhead? <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> hard to say. Um, but. <laughs> um, so anyway, let me look back on my quick notes here. I'm usually better at reading them, but it's really fucking dark in here. Um, so, like I said, four songs we're listening to from 51966 at the Avalon in San Francisco. Uh, Hurts Me Too, Sick and Tired, uh, Come Back Baby, which is this one. And then... We're gonna listen to this really crazy, super ass poppy, like fucking version of Good Lovin'. Good Lovin'. I got Pig Pen, Pig Pen, Pig Pen, Pig Pen, Pig Pen. Pig pen. The show a month after this one because I couldn't find this one. Avalon Ballroom, Grateful Dead, Quicksilver Messenger Service, June 10th, 1966. The Quick and the Dead. Love that poster. Uh, some more pig pen down here. I love this kind of blues. Please, Mom, I won't get drunk no more. Yeah, right. Billy sounds super basic. This is way before Mickey. Little tiny kid. It's killer. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So, let's see. Francisco Joaquina, who sent me that um, reply the other day to one of my pig pen videos. And by the way, I put up my other three pig pen videos into a playlist on my channel, so just click the playlist and you can watch the other ones if you want to get a whole big dose of pig pen on his, uh, uh, sadly the 50th anniversary of his passing. But anyway, Francisco Joaquina, who was, uh, neighbors, with the McKernan family and friends with Kevin, Big Ben's younger brother, wrote this to me. Let me flip the next song and I'll read it to you. All right, and listen to this crazy good love while I read this to you. So, um, Francisco said, Pig Pen was my, was my neighbor in Palo Alto in the early 60s. His younger brother, Kevin, was close to my age, so we were pals. I share the same birthday as Big Ben, which will be tomorrow, um, but I was born in 57. I know Big Ben spent a lot of time in, in the East Palo Alto in the black nightclubs where he was heavily influenced and often took the stage as a teenager. I mean, these are clearly things that, you know, people know, but to have been hanging out with his younger brother and, like, 
you know, knowing about him vicariously because he was a little older by this time, but still, very cool, you know, and, and this was pre-dead that he's talking about. Um, he's like, <laughs> he also added, he goes, I believe this is also where he found his fondness for booze. And at the clubs, free booze is free booze. So, <laughs> so anyway, thank you, Francisco. Uh, appreciate it, and um, it's a really cool little insight. And uh, I was hoping you would respond to my reply, um, so that I could have another little addition to this. And if you do, I'll I'll add another part to this video. But anyway, pig pen, the pivotal member of the Grateful Dead musically in initially knew how to sing, knew how to harmonize, knew how to make songs happen, and he developed the rest of it with the amazing other members of the Grateful Dead, and they put it all together. He ran eight years with the band before he succumbed to his liver disease, and even though I'm commemorating him by drinking a Rainier, I didn't drink pickle all day either, so I don't drink pickle all day. So. But here's the pig pen and this crazy fast good love. It's like a. This is like a fucking 1950s early 60s version or like a Ramones cover super fast <laughs> three minutes ten seconds or something cheers big pen now I don't know if this is big pen playing this I didn't research that far. It could be TC. I don't know. But this is early 66, so. Cheers. Jerry. Thanks for sharing this with me, everybody. Appreciate you all. And we all really, truly miss Big Ben. Big Ben's what really started getting me focused on the dead when I first started listening to him. I liked what he was putting down. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching. Big Ben. R.I.P.